Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, digital transformation champions, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney-Burke and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. Be sure to subscribe to JSB Talks Digital on iTunes or Spotify. I promise you the 20 minutes you invest each week with me for free will take your digital and social media knowledge to new levels. In this episode number 87, I talk about making money from digital marketing. Coming up in today's show, in social media news, Facebook bans cryptocurrency ads, Google Chrome will soon mark all unencrypted pages as not secure, and Snapchat introduces Bitmoji Deluxe. I interview Lorcan Kinsella of Nova Brand Digital. In shout outs, three web marketing tips from the pros. Ask JSB. In JSB's column, get established on Google, but show up on Facebook. And find out what social media tool saved my working week. Social Media News. Facebook has banned cryptocurrency ads and in a blog post has explained why. The move is an intentional brush stroke to curb deceptive marketing. Rob Leathern, product management director at Facebook, says two of our core advertising principles outline our belief that ads should be safe and that we build for people first. Misleading or deceptive ads have no place on Facebook. We've created a new policy that prohibits ads that promote financial products and services that are frequently associated with misleading or deceptive promotional practices such as binary options, initial coin offerings and cryptocurrency. Facebook say the decision isn't permanent and that it will revisit the rules when it's gotten better at detecting and removing bad ads. Google's forthcoming launch of Chrome 68 browser in July will flag every site that doesn't use HTTPS encryption as not secure. This signal will be highlighted prominently in its URL bar. Google promotes the use of HTTPS to help keep your browsing data safe from anybody who may be spying on your web traffic while it's moving between your browser and a server. So, from July... Every HTTP site will be flagged as not secure, whether it includes input fields or not. Are you as excited as me about the new Bitmoji Deluxe range from Snapchat? You know I love to have fun with Jamoji over on the social network, but now you and I can get more creative with our social alter egos. In a blog post, Snap Inc. said, We've tried to create a new Bitmoji style that will help our community create Bitmojis that feel even more personal. In the future, we'll continue updating Bitmoji Deluxe in an effort to help make each Bitmoji feel even more unique. So, to update your Bitmoji, go to Settings in the Bitmoji app on your smartphone and then choose Change Avatar Style to get started. Don't worry though, if you love your old Bitmoji, Bitmoji Classic and Bitstrip styles will still be available. Add me on Snapchat, I'm JSB Snaps, to see the all new Jumoji. Interview. In this episode, I interview Lorcan Kinsella of Brand Nova Digital. Founder and CEO Lorcan has worked with some of the biggest names in information marketing while working with the Launchmen. Over the past eight years, he has trained over 2,500 professionals through custom trainings for leading brands, the commercial radio sector and agencies. And he has first-hand knowledge of the challenges facing many businesses in digital marketing. Lorcan lectures in digital marketing with several institutions including the Dublin Business School, Griffith College, Digital Marketing Institute and other corporate training organisations. We caught up recently in Dublin and discussed some of the successes and failures 
in digital marketing strategy and approach. JSB Talks Digital. 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 Lorcan Kinsella, you are the founder and CEO of Brand Nova Digital. Now, we often have lots of digital conversations, but today we're going to talk about... Actually, we're going to ask the question, are businesses making money from digital? People like you and me hype it up, but let's discuss if people are actually able to monetize digital. What's your, what are your views? Um, good, good question, Joanne. Um, for me, and I suppose clients which I deal with every day is around, or where I kind of go back to, is f- first of all... Um, because we, we live in a digital world, we, um, I think the traditional kind of aspects of marketing are lost. And for me, um, looking or a any client comes into my office, um, looking to whether it be build out a website or look at maybe a campaign, whether it be search engine optimization, pay-per-click, um, social media management, copyright and video production, whatever it may be, it all really goes back to one place, um, and that is your digital marketing real estate. And for many who don't know what that means, or what I've, I suppose, put that term, is your, your website, your brand. We understand that there are many social media platforms out there. We, we, there's 52 different social media platforms that we can actually access, although people say you need to be everywhere. You don't. Um, you need to maybe be where your audience is. But where we can dance with social media, um, we need to bring, um, and as I say, we have the parties in all of these places, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, whatever it may be, but you bring the after parties back at your website or back at your, um, your, I suppose, digital marketing real estate. So I always look at in terms of actually how I monetize, like, you know, um, a business or a customer or a client walks into our office, is actually how we can monetize that. So it is actually trying to access um, traffic, two words, traffic and conversion. And the traffic would be looking at traffic from whether it be search engine optimization, pay-per-click, social media, display marketing, email, whatever it may be, but ultimately bringing it back to the digital marketing real estate. The there is where um, I think for many years we've had web and a lot of web designers won't like this where people have built websites but they have they haven't really understood like you know kind of the why or the objective of once we build a website you remember like you know we've all been gone through that experience where we've spent loads of money we've got emails back and forward you know the headaches the the stress the, all of that and then suddenly. Your website's built, and suddenly you find out that there's no traffic coming there, and you wonder why, like, you know, what's going on and what is social media, and none of it works. It is trying to understand that there are people, the human element of people landing there, of where they have problems, of where, at the moment, like, where we, the majority of us actually kind of go to a thing called Google and actually kind of search for that problem. Um, and looking for that solution on where you pro- pro- provide or present that solution to them. And that is on your space. And on that space, um, and I, I, I know I can, I might, this might be uh, so was long-winded, but on that space is where there are a number of um, pieces of the jigsaw that need to, to, be, to, be, um, to be present. And that would be that call to action. Um, that when someone lands there with the problem, you are going to solve it. But also as well, the whole idea of actually having kind of that look and feel that actually resonates with the audience. The, the, um, the, the, the call to action, which I mentioned, but also as well, topography, brand look and feel, testimonial, social proof, trust indicators, which like any of us, and if you consider it, that we all are buyers and we usually are considered buyers. We're not stupid. So once we actually kind of go and buy something, we're going to consider maybe the competitors, price and all of that. And usually we'll stay with something where we actually kind of know that this particular business or where we've landed or where we've done our search has what I as well kind of, I suppose, look at that acronym CTA as credibility, trust and authority. So in terms of the question, it might be long-winded, apologies, but that's me, <laughs> is trying to actually kind of bring them and having all of those elements together as one. Do you think that the success and the explosion of social media has happened at the expense of web real estate? It, it, um, it, it, it has, or I think it's actually where business owners, because social media is, it's, it, there's, it's like a, 
um, a snowball effect of where we're trying to kind of wonder what's working and what's not. Okay, so there's a sometimes a, a lack of focus of where we should be time and effort. And of course, if for example, like you know, my audience um, is um, in or maybe kind of on LinkedIn or on Instagram or on Facebook, it is obviously you're there to develop, develop or uh, build a brand, a presence. But I suppose it's that whole that, that whole eighty twenty kind of rule of providing really valuable content um, of the 80% and then drip feeding them back to the digital marketing real estate. But where I know many businesses where their whole engagement, their whole business is built around Facebook, which sometimes people would say is, a, is, a, is an important thing. And as you, you're probably familiar with, with the latest update kind of on Facebook um, just within the last two weeks, we have a situation now where that whole algorithm has changed in terms of engagement, where it's now about friends, family, and going back to basics. So now where does the brand or business lie there? So where we have maybe built up businesses, there's one thing that you do have and that you can be guaranteed it and where you can go home every night and know that it's yours, that it is your brand, it is yours, is your digital marketing real estate, your website, your business. That is the biggest asset which you have. And once I think people um, understand that what, whether there's a new algorithm in search engine optimization or social media or any one of the social media platforms, whether it may be LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, yeah, Pinterest, whatever it may be, one thing that you do have and it is consistent is actually kind of your authority, your website, which that will be for many the go-to place of whether it be I purchase my handbag, whether I kind of purchase a consultant, a consultancy kind of um, kind of uh, session, or whatever it may be, the accountant, the solicitor, the carpenter, plumber. It's across the board, but that's where they go because they know it's there. And I think that's one thing that is um, so important where. Um, and I, I, I'd be very, very, sometimes I find at, at times social media literally sucks the lifeblood out of our brand. And it's because we're just not sure. Maybe we don't know exactly how it all works. But one thing that I know and has worked for my clients and actually something that I really impress upon my clients is that this, the one place that you need to take care of is that space. So we're in the business and I mean, I've been preaching, teaching, convincing and converting yeah. for 10 whole years, a whole decade. Yeah. And is it because that some businesses, if they think about selling online or scaling online, if they're not doing e-commerce, they don't think it's relevant? I mean, I was really impressed by the, the latest retail figures that showed that in the service sector, mm. um, sales online are up like 17% in 2017. I was like, whoa, I sell a service. This is good for me. People need to wake up and smell the coffee. Are we still in education mode? Yeah. The, it, 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 the, the Funny, when I get up on a Monday morning, right, um, people, you know, kind of, it's, it's going back to focus. I'm just considering actually how I can make a sale, right? It goes back to business because business hasn't changed. We believe because we have digital, like, you know, business has somewhat changed. And we know that there has been that kind of paradigm shift out there in, 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 in every small town, village, city across Ireland, across Europe, across the globe. And that paradigm shift is where you might have had an existing business, like bricks and mortar, has now, like, where they have had their mortgage paid off, like, over many, many years, are closing down, okay? And where Tom, Dick, and Sally has got that e-commerce platform, okay? So when you look at where we maybe need to kind of look at developing, like, you know, um, I suppose not only a website, but obviously, like, a payment gateway system or a sales funnel and developing it as in the touch point of when they arrive on the site and go through that process of where we feel credibility, where we know that there's trust, and this company has got authority. Through the engagement where we might have had on social, where they have brought us back to where we can actually kind of do the sale, it is always about the sale. It is about paying the mortgage, paying the rent. It is about going out on a Friday evening and having a couple of drinks and knowing, like, you know, I knew exactly what I was about this week was actually out to make money to make that sale and understanding that focus that mindset that this because it's new business it hasn't changed it still requires three things discipline consistency and hard work so you're saying that when it comes to any business any sector product or service based 
that there's an opportunity to monetize online. Absolutely. Yesterday I was with an accountancy firm um, and um, where um, I suppose at the beginning of the conversation or consultation it was a new website they were looking to build out a new, a new um, website they were, we also identified as well like you know that they could not be found in any of the search engines um, they were not they weren't they, they were not within the top 10 of when I searched for their particular top five services which they have on their website so that was a big issue so they said well even if I could find you if I landed on your site I still wouldn't really engage because it didn't really kind of give me peace of right reassurance like that you know that that even though they're a really good organization when i met this they had some fantastic clients but that wasn't reflected on the front part of the front optimization part of the website okay but by the time i left the meeting we had then like you know signed contracts for an e-commerce platform even though they are a service driven industry okay and we actually worked out in a way of actually how they could they could sell a service-driven kind of um, proposition to their customers through their website with more of a strategic look over six months to a year and how that's done. So absolutely, um, I am fully behind. Um, of course, there, are going to, there is going to be a percentage of maybe businesses where you're, you know, it is a static and there, there is always that maybe exception to the rule. But the majority of any, I suppose, companies that come in through our kind of doors, my, um, my advice would be you have an opportunity not only to actually kind of buy, um, buy kind of, you know, kind of as a, a picking up the phone, um, but also as well to have that payment gateway system. And just to give you an example, five or six years ago, I was given a talk in Lyra uh, State down in County Kilkenny, and there was a, a furniture company kind of in the audience, and after the um, um, after the talk, after the talk, um, they approached me and said, "Would you be interested in actually maybe looking at our website and building out um, a new one?" And I said, "I'd absolutely, yeah, we'd, we'd look at it." Um, and th- that was five years ago, five maybe six years ago. I uh, then said, "Well, let's build an e-commerce platform." And they said, "No, no, we just want a basic brochure website." And I said, "Well, w- why not?" And he says, "People will not buy furniture online," and I said, "They will." Because we understand as well, I suppose, within what we do and what I suppose spend a lot of time with, I spend a lot of time in analytics and actually understanding traffic and what's been searched for online and where there's markets and how many people are searching for maybe kind of a bed like, you know, kind of in the areas of maybe County Carlow, County Wexford and Kilkenny or Galway, wherever it may be. And I know like that there is a demand online. So once I know there is a demand online, I understand that then they've got a valued proposition where they can sell online. That company now is doing... A, a considerable percentage, I won't give you the figure, but a considerable percentage online now, five, six years later, and are doing very, very well, where they're distributing all over um, the island of Ireland. So, across the board. So not only can we convert the bricks and mortar model into e-commerce, there's also scalability opportunities for businesses like people like me. I sell, you know, time for money. Yeah. There's only so many hours I can mm. sell, but there's an opportunity for the service sector mm. to scale with an online platform. Absolutely. The, um, we, I, I mean, I would have, I suppose, in the early days, um, I worked with um, in a company called The Launchman, which were based in San Diego. And what we were actually kind of responsible for was um, um, launching kind of information products for the likes of maybe Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra. Um, you know Bob Proctor, Brian Tracy. We did we did them all. Like and our USP then um, was we never did under a, a million dollars in a launch where we leveraged search engine optimization. What year again was that? That was 2010. 2010. Wow. Okay, and and back then we were actually dealing with obviously a lot of people who were in the services sector. Like you know where um, it was our our job was to leverage digital. Okay, to bring people to one point a payment gateway system but that launch was done over usually we took a sales letter and we turned it on its side and we did it over a month with the first email like that there's something coming right down to a soft launch right down to a hype where we'd have 10 or 15,000 people going in to buy that particular product okay it didn't last we lost our USP like where we could have did a launch in 2012 like you know where uh, we did we did 800 and something dollars but the, the whole idea my whole point um, is that whether you are a consultant, whether you are um, involved in any type of consultation, training, whatever it may be, 
um, the whole time and this, I'm a big believer that sometimes we it, it, we go I, I go back to mindset in terms of actually how we look at our brand how we look at our digital marketing real estate how we build authority in that um, same way people might be misguided in terms of actually kind of where there's so many shiny objects out there at the moment where there there are this kind of get quick uh, rich scheme and where it happens overnight business still as it was many hundreds of years ago which is still now the case takes time energy consistency discipline and hard work and not everybody is actually cut out for that and that's where you will have success you will have failure but within the time for money kind of aspect it is actually kind of over time building the authority getting your first number of clients doing the deals kind of hustling a small bit to kind of get those people kind of on the as what i call i suppose the ba- like you know the, the the foundation and on the foundation where for example even when, when i was working with the launch men it was actually kind of working just having the opportunity to work with some f- amazing people that was to me my payment that was that was my gold that was actually kind of where i was actually getting an insight of actually how this worked and also understanding like you know kind of how even within that space the the, the, I suppose the, the big names, but how it was all structured, the information, how it was delivered, and also as well, like where it went from someone charging 50 euro an hour to actually then knowing and understanding that they were the master of their their space, where I am now and will not have anything kind of through my door unless like someone is paying 25,000, which is, it's not uncommon, you know, where you have your mastermind groups and like to get into that. It starts with understanding and being passionate about that space. That, that market that I think makes it all it doesn't happen easy it is the consistency the discipline that I suppose that makes the difference I think for, for me so the message is yes you can make money online but you need to put the effort in like in any business and also protect and grow your own real estate and um, I think it's really important that people get good advice there's lots of advice out there um, and I think just by listening back to this interview, people might understand um, why owning their own online capital is really important. Um, Lorcan Kinsella, a pleasure as always. We could talk all day about digital, but where should I send my listeners and anybody who wants to get in touch with you? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah um, you can find me at um, www.brandnovadigital.com. Um, there, we, um, for I suppose our actually, I suppose first point of engagement is where we offer a free um, website online report, which we'll actually kind of um, carry out within 24 hours. Just pop in your your name, your email. It's worth uh, we've it's worth I suppose um, when you see the report, I think you'll be wowed, in, and it will it'll give you I suppose a couple of things. It will give you an idea of exactly where you are, your benchmark. If you're you're there in the market if you're not and once you know that that's the starting point so go there get an audit let's strip everything you've got and going on back to actually kind of where you you might think where you are but we'll give it to you in very very hard facts and figures of exactly kind of where you are online and then from there is we strategy in place to to kind of get you and maybe look at the business growth trajectory and actually how you can do month on month over that depending on actually kind of where your market is Okay, well, that's an excellent offer. I think people should take that up. Lorcan Kinsler, thank you so much for joining me on JSB Talks Digital. That's great. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Shoutouts. In this part of the show, I give shoutouts to brands, organizations, or individuals whose work online is remarkable and worth talking about. In this episode, I'm sharing three web marketing tips from the pros. One. Claim your assets, says Julian Brunt, owner and CEO of Organic SEO. He says that if you own and operate a local business, be sure to claim and verify your search engine directory management pages like Google My Business and Bing Places for Business. By verifying and editing your business information, you can both help customers find you and tell them the story of your business through directories and reviews on platforms like Yelp, City Search, Yellow Pages, and more. You can use a tool like Moz Local to create, maintain, and push hundreds of business directory listings to the major data aggregators so that you improve SEO and your overall online presence. Two. The website Mindvalley has been able to acquire over 1.3 million subscribers and 
200,000 paying students just through its blog content. That's the power of blogging for SEO. Vishin Lakini, the founder and CEO of Mind Valley, wrote about how he built his company to $15 million a year with zero loans or angel money. He says their success is down to using the user experience honeycomb model. Read more about this method on the blog post associated with this podcast. Three. Digital marketing guru Neil Patel says that we should remove anything that slows down our website speed. He describes a slow loading website as the kiss of death. Page speed is vital both to users and to search engines. According to eConsultancy, 40% of people abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. Google announced recently that starting in July 2018, page speed will be a ranking factor for mobile searches. In this week's Ask JSB, Trish asks how she can generate warm leads from her website. Well, Trish, the first thing you can do to dramatically improve your conversion rates is add some sort of lead magnet to your website. Offer something for free in exchange for name and an email address. Remember, prospects and customers are much more protective of their email information than ever before, so you need to give an incentive. You should also respect data protection law and set up two-step authentication when collecting emails. You should also only use the information it was intended for and send your subscribers relevant and valuable content. Don't forget, if you have a burning social media or digital marketing question, simply click on digitaltraininginstitute.ie forward slash askjsb and leave me a voicemail. You can also send me your questions to any of our social networks. JSB's column. In today's JSB's column, I want to clear up the long running debate of website versus Facebook marketing. I know some of you may have a different opinion than me on this topic, and that's okay. Many people hang their online marketing strategy off the coattails of Facebook, but in my view, it is a dangerous approach. Let me just say that, of course, every business is different, but I would not in any business invest 100% of my business on Facebook, which, of course, you don't own. So I'm going to set out my reasons why you should get established on Google first before showing up on Facebook. Facebook is constantly updating its algorithm. More recently, it announced that it's going to deprioritize publishers' posts and updates. However, if you optimize your blog post for Google, then they're going to rank top in search. Facebook announced a number of years ago Instant Articles, where the service hosts some publishers' content directly, but promises to send more readers to the original site as well. However, this has declined in importance. And once again, if you have your own optimized blog, then you are going to rank highly in Google. There's also been a broad move towards publishing video directly on Facebook, which could affect how many links to web stories publishers put on their Facebook pages. Algorithms on Facebook that prioritize native video over text links could have an effect too. But don't forget, YouTube is the world's second largest search engine and YouTube is owned by Google. So if you're hosting your videos on YouTube, you're going to be rewarded by Google. Google's AMP, Accelerated Mobile Pages feature, hosts publishers' content directly on Google servers. This has become more important. So if you have a website, why not get it AMP approved? Google research proves that search is a dominant digital marketing tactic. Most searches relate to people checking open hours, product or service information, business location and directions. Online reviews also influence purchasing decisions, 
with 88% of people trusting these reviews as much as a personal recommendation. I know firsthand how powerful Facebook is as a marketing platform. However, if you want to use digital marketing for long-term gain, then invest in your website. Make sure you're seen on Google first, then of course, invest effort in showing up on Facebook. If you would like to hire JSB to help you develop your content marketing strategy, then get in touch. Simply drop me an email to joanne at digitaltraining.ie. Social media of the week. The tool that saved my working week this week is Submerge on Mac. If you want to know how to add subtitles to video files on your Mac, Submerge will save your working week. The tool can easily create hard-coded subtitles, merging your file with your video to create a new file that is suitable for upload to third-party platforms such as the social networks. Submerge supports all text-based subtitle formats and you can export your video for the most common devices with just one click. It also has a full screen player built in so you can watch the subtitled video directly within Submerge. Download Submerge from the iTunes store but it will cost you €20.99. Thank you for tuning in to episode 87 of JSB Talks Digital. As always, I have everything discussed on today's show on my award-winning blog at digitaltraining.ie. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Libsyn, Stitcher and SoundCloud. Please send me your questions and your suggested topics for the show. I'm always looking for new ideas. Get in touch on social Tweet me to a Tweets by JSB. Post a comment on our Facebook page at Digital Training Institute. You can also snap me to JSB Snaps and I'm on Instagram as JSB Grams. I'm Joanne Sweeney-Burke. This is JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.